Anyhow, it's 95 degrees here in Middletown, and I've been telling you all day long, hopefully you're paying attention, that Minus the Bear were going to show up, and they did. So hi, guys. Thanks hey, so much for coming did. in. I am we're so here. happy Thanks to... Us. I am so happy to have you guys in the studio. This new album of yours, Omni, is absolutely amazing. Oh, and, thank you very much. You know, I, it, it's guaranteed to land on the top 10 list of just about everybody who, who matters. So... <laughs> <laughs> And not that I matter, but it's going to be on my top ten. But anybody else who matters is it's definitely going to be there. It is incredible stuff. And I guess where I want to start with, just it's, it's a weird thing, but like when I was reading up on you guys years ago, everybody always used to talk about you guys as prog rock and prog rock hybrids and all this stuff. So they're giving you these like weird names, like you're, you're like, a, like a Toyota car or something like that. You're a prog rock hybrid. Growing up, what were you listening to that got you to play what you're playing now? Um... A ton of different stuff. Yeah. Soundgarden. Lots of Soundgarden. I mean, I mean that's th- like a there's a, I mean, a lot of, like, for me, it was a lot of metal stuff. I mean, you're from the Northwest area, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. was that, and that's all the, during the beginning of, like, Mother Love Bone, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam stuff? Yeah. You know, when they were all coming together? And, uh, yeah, and, you know, early Nirvana, um, that kind of stuff. But also just, you know, punk rock and uh, East Coast, D.C. punk and... All this different like Henry Rollins stuff and things of that nature, like or even Fugazi oh, and Discord stuff. Discord, nice, yeah. um, a lot of stuff that really is, if you listen to it, still somewhat progressive sounding and interesting in terms of some of the playing and whatnot. But yeah, there are there's interesting yeah. time changes and things like that in those in those songs as well. But then, like the keyboard work that comes in is you know totally like not from that genre of music. So we're you know what were you uh, getting into there that fed to playing that stuff because it's really cool. Um, by the way, that's Alex who's about yeah, to talk. Yeah, well, yeah. I, <laughs> I probably should have mentioned that, you know. I, I started on saxophone, so, um, you know, a little bit of jazz and... Oh, to coming from somebody that's completely non-musical. I mean, I can't even hum on key. <laughs> How difficult is it going from like a, an instrument like a sax to a keyboard? Does it lend itself? Um... Yeah, I mean, like the way the piano's laid out is kind of how everyone learns music theory. So as long as you, you know, as long as you know that stuff, the piano makes sense. So everyone when you were doing learns music theory? <laughs> well, anyone who does. And okay. I, <laughs> so now we know that Jake didn't learn music <laughs> theory, but we do know that you guys, the rest of you, did. Um, when you were uh, when you were doing sax, I think I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for now on, we'll just talk to Alex. About it. Uh, when you were um, when you were doing the sax, were you uh, you know jazz? Were you Coltrane kind of stuff? Or Coltrane's what? my guy. Yeah. I you mean, I, I started learning improv um you know listening to charlie parker and coltrane stuff like that so and it definitely lends you can hear all of that i don't know if that ends up in the keyboard influence because it's been a while since but you still you still feel that you hear that freedom that you guys use on your on your records you know and one of the things that i was i was noticing when you went into the studio to record this new album omni they said that uh well you guys said actually that uh, you did it basically in, in unison instead of trying to like like do separate little tracks you're basically playing as a band like you do on stage as opposed to the usual way of doing an album mm. whose whose decision was that to, to try it that way it was unanimous amongst the band members and also talking to um joe ciccarelli the producer of the record when we met with him the first time we we'd, we'd already been discussing doing a more live thing just because people seem to enjoy the energy of the live shows and sometimes during the recording process you can kind of get some of that energy sucked out. Yeah, so. it kind of stifles it when you have to yeah. do the drum track, you know, 9,000 times. No offense, Aaron. But, you know, like, yeah. you know, and sometimes when they make you do drum tracks and over and over and over again, or you have to lay down the same guitar riff, you know, 35 yeah. times until you get it exactly right. And Yeah, so it was a, it was a great way to, a great, a great process to try to figure out how to get that energy onto the record. When you write new stuff, do you like to uh, work it out on the road? Like, you know, introduce it to your live sets and then try to work and, and play with it a little bit? I mean, if, if the song is done enough, we do. I guess it just depends on how complete we feel the song is because we don't, you know, want to play anything that's like a half baked version of something. So, right. You know, but we have in the past definitely played, played stuff, played songs that are that are finished and checked. You know, anytime like when you've played a song, you think is you've got it and this is great. Now you can bring it up and bring it uh, bring it out in front of the live audience, and then you realize playing it live for a few weeks that you've got to change. You want to change a few things, and it's grown and adapted and all that stuff. Yeah, that definitely happened with one of the songs. I mean, with Broken China on the record because we had a whole different version that we used to play. Yeah, live. Um, but yeah, on this record actually, a lot of the stuff hadn't been. Uh, a lot of the stuff we didn't play live before. Um, I mean, a few of the songs we played live, but most of the material was uh, done in the studio, so we hadn't. We didn't check a lot of it out in front did, of an audience. Did you spend a lot of time in the studio for this 
for this CD? Did it take a long yes. time to do? It was yeah. probably, what, like two, three months total of time? Yeah, yeah. something like so. that. As opposed to like your earlier albums with a... Planet of Ice was two months. Um, <clears throat> it generally hovers around, you know... A couple months. A couple of months. Yeah. And depending on how many hours a day are worked. Well, uh, let's let's hear some of that work put, put to use here. What, uh, what, what song are you going to treat us to? I'm going to do uh, Hold Me Down. Nice. I'm in the wind And I am going to let it take me where it may Maybe it lifts me to New Orleans or the dark streets of LA. I'm in the wind, and I am in the wind. And if I fall to where you're standing, will you tend to me? I'm in the wind. I am in the wind And if I end up in your arms Will you help me stay? I want your comfort for the evening I need to pause and get my head Hold me Minus the Bear, live in the studio here on Brooklyn Public Radio, 90.5 tonight. Hey, Zachary. Oh. 
The odds of a child becoming a professional athlete are 1 in 16,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit AutismSpeaks.org. And uh, so you guys, you've been having the road for, how long has this tour been so far for you? It's been, if you count, the entire what we're calling yeah this the is tour like, there's like omni this is, tour yeah this is like the second leg of the first omni tour yeah <laughs> so it's been going on kind of sounds like you guys are going to be on the road for a couple of years with this yeah. thing, the, way, the way you've mapped it out interesting title for the album omni because it means anything you want it to mean you know yeah. i mean it means basically it's everything yeah so what what is it <laughs> well we tried not to commit Really, to a name, so we decided to throw everything into a name, <laughs> and Omni is it. So. Yeah, that does work, you know. Well, you could have called it ubiquitous, but then most people wouldn't have been able to pronounce it, so Omni yeah. works. <laughs> yeah, and they'd be like, ubiquitous, ubiquitous. They think you're anyway. calling, yeah, they think you're calling them a name, so <laughs> you're calling me ubiquitous. Um, anyway, what is, I, I've always wanted to know this too, because I'm an idiot, but what is Minus of the Bear? Where did that come from? Ooh. <laughs> Oh, it's That's a, a risque story. Okay, then we'll just leave that. PG thirteen. Yeah, this is this is a family show, so we yeah. can't we can't go there. But off mic, you'll have to tell me because it's yeah. one of the things that I actually wonder about out loud sometimes, <laughs> <clears throat> which is why I'm very lonely at times. Anyway, uh, so uh, would you treat me to another song? Huh? Would you? Huh? Yeah. Do uh, Summer Angel.
One of my favorite songs on that album. I love that track. Hepatitis C? Not sure where to start. Well, you know you can get infected without even having to try. Remember that time you borrowed my razor? Or how about that time you went and got a tattoo? <laughs> even though I told you it would hurt. Or how about that time we went on holiday? That holiday. <laughs> no, not that holiday either. You know, the one where you borrowed my toothbrush. Well then, what are you moping for? It hasn't got any symptoms. How do you know you haven't got it already? Have you been tested? Well then, go on. Well, what do you know? You've done it. Now who feels like a clever boy? That always fascinates me is that you guys, um, as far as I remember, Joe Ciccarelli is the first time you've brought in an outside voice, basically, to be the producer, you know, of, of your stuff. How did, uh, what prompted you to bring in somebody, and then how did you find Joe? Well, actually, the first full-length record we did, we did with Steve Fisk. Right. Um, that was uh, the only other time besides Joe that we used an outside producer. Um, I think that on this record, we just needed to find a sixth mind that wasn't involved in the organization previously so someone to you know give an objective view objective view how did you come up with joe because uh, for those people out there that don't know his name he was the rock on tours he did the shins my morning jacket i think um frank zappa zappa yeah yeah, yeah. Sounds <laughs> great. Stuff. yeah. yeah he, i could imagine he's got a couple yeah. of stories about frank that'd be kind of fun <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah just one or two yeah just you know because frank was such a mellow guy that really never <laughs> didn't stretch the bounds at all so he was yeah. he was very conservative um no, it was uh, we kind of just uh, came up with a dream list of producers um, that we wanted to work with, um, and then did some phone calls, conference calls with people, and then two and had Joe and one other fellow fly up to New York and met with him individually. And uh, oh, Seattle, what am I talking about? Pick a city, any city. Yeah, whatever. You know, even on tour, it doesn't. It's just you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, met up with Joe. Um, he came to the our rehearsal space and listened to some demos, and it just seemed like it was. It clicked. Just kind of, yeah. kind of worked together because it definitely, yeah. I mean, it sounds amazing. You know, he did great work with you guys and it was really, you know, this new album I think is absolutely brilliant. Like I said, going into this thing. So congratulations on all of that and all of the success that I'm, I'm sure you're going to see off of this. So you'll be on the road for the next few years, according to the tour. <laughs> uh, tell him at least 40 or so. Yeah, at least. So. <laughs> so people don't miss tonight, by the way, because it's going to be an incredible show. And I mean, you think it's hot outside. We to get into the Starland. It's going to be a smoking show in there. <laughs> at Can least I, it's air conditioning. We yeah. this place in Rochester that was like, oh my God. No AC? Hottest show ever. And, then, and you're not talking about the, the show itself, you're talking well, about the... that was a temperature. Pretty hot, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was all there, hot. <laughs> actually, clouds were forming on stage. There was so much temperature difference, yeah. So, can you guys do another song for us? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Terrific. My time.
I got your day. I got you all. I got you all. My time. I got your nights. I got your nights. I got your day. I got you all. I got you all. My time, minus the bear, live in the studio here on Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 the night. And I really hope everybody, if they could just see the instruments that you guys were playing, what Dave is playing and what Alex is playing, because I've never seen that little, looks like an old AM transmit, uh, transistor radio. Stylophone? From, yeah, the yeah, stylophone. The stylophone, that is incredible. And that, uh, you and Dave and I were talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, the record. Omnicord, it's a Japanese synthesizer auto harp from the 80s it's, that kind of like, arpeggiates whatever kind of chord you... Um, play with your left hand. It's really cool. So it's like all <laughs> kinds of cool vintage analog stuff. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Congratulations on the Omni release. It is an absolutely brilliant album. And uh, like I said, it's going to show up on, on my top 10 list. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and very, really, really high up there too. So thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Listen, I want to play another track off of the Omni CD. This is a song called The Thief on 90.5 The Night. <laughs> 